Alrighty, so in this podcast, um, let's talk about some colligative properties. Colligative properties are how solutes affect the properties of solutions. So it's going to tell us how the things that are being dissolved in the solution um, affect the properties of it. All right, so the most important thing um, that's going to determine colligative properties is the concentration. Now, the concentration, we'll talk about it a little bit in, more in a second, but the concentration depends not only on how many grams of something you add or how many moles of something of solute you add, but also on what the substance is, if it's ionic or covalent. All right, so the three colligative properties we're going to focus on are going to be um, vapor pressure, boiling point, and freezing point. It's helpful if you can remember these phrases because it tells you exactly what happens to them. So the vapor pressure is lowered when you add solutes, the boiling point is elevated when you add um, solutes, and the freezing point is depressed or lowered when you add solutes. So that's important because it'll help you when you get to problems. All right, now first off, what is vapor, va vapor pressure? Vapor pressure is um, the pressure that gas molecules um, over a solution or a solvent exert when they are evaporated and um, they're bouncing around, they're hitting the sides of the container and all of these little gas molecules exert a force in a certain amount of area. That is called pressure. So the pressure that the little gas molecules above the solution exert is the vapor pressure. Now how does adding a solute to the solution affect the vapor pressure? Well it lowers the vapor pressure. The reason is that when you add a solute, the solute and solvent particles are attracted to each other. That attraction um, means that less solvent particles are going to evaporate. Because less of them evaporate, then there's going to be less gas molecules above the solution um, bouncing off the walls of the container. Therefore, if there's less of them, there's going to be a lower vapor pressure. So here's just a molecular picture. So here we have a pure solvent, like say water, and you see that it's evaporating and um, it is exerting a pressure on the walls of the container here, the vapor pressure. Over here, we have added a solute, and so maybe like salt, and um, the particles of the solute and the solvent, they're interacting. This interaction, is keeping some of those solvent molecules from evaporating. So there's less of them up here above the surface of the liquid. So there's less of them, that means there is a lower vapor pressure above that liquid. So it lowers the vapor pressure. All right, when you um, add a solute to a solution, it affects the freezing point. So when something freezes, it becomes more ordered and it forms a, what we call a crystalline lattice. So a very ordered, um, little solid so you know they all line up in line and they make this pretty little solid when you add solute particles to it therefore it interferes with the forming of that lattice that crystalline lattice so it makes it harder for the solution to get ordered and to freeze so the freezing point actually is lower um, than what it what the uh, pure solvent would be so here's a picture so here you see the solute molecules they're frozen um, in a, uh, a solid form. And then over here you see that the solute particles are coming in and they are interfering with that interaction between the solvent particles. So it's making harder for them to come together and harder for them to um, become a solid. All right, um, boiling point is also affected by adding a solute. This is kind of the same reasoning as uh, vapor pressure lowering. So you get the solvent and the solute and they interact and they're attracted to each other. Therefore, less solvent particles um, are going to you know, escape as a gas. So you're going to have to add more and more and more energy to kind of encourage or overcome that attraction that the solute solvent particles have for one another. So because you have to add more energy to it, the temperature is going to be higher. So the boiling point is actually higher. So it's harder to get them to leave that solution and go into um, gas phase. So here's a picture of that. So here you see the solvent molecules. They're pretty freely moving. Here you get the solute molecules in and they are attracted to that solvent. And so that attraction means that less of those solvent particles are escaping. 
All right, so the type of solute um, has a huge effect on the, um, the colligative property. So what solute you add, be it ionic, covalent, and then actually what type of ionic substance you add, add has an effect on the amount that the vapor pressure lowers or the amount that the freezing point depresses or the amount that the boiling point elevates. Ionic solutes, um, they dissolve in water. When they dissolve in water, they split into positives and negatives. Because they split into positive and negatives, they produce two or more ion particles um, in the solution. So that's two or more solute particles, essentially, because they split apart. So they're going to affect the colligative properties more than a molecular solute. A molecular solute means a covalent molecule, something that doesn't split apart, doesn't ionize. So if we um, count sheep, I mean uh, particles, if we count particles here, um, you need to understand how molecular or covalent and ionic compounds will produce different amounts of particles in, when they're dissolved in water. So if you have a covalent substance, which is two nonmetals, two or more nonmetals, then it doesn't break apart um, the molecule itself when it goes into uh, a solution. So if you have one mole of a covalent substance, you're just going to get one mole of particles. So there's just going to be for every one, there's one. When you talk about ionic substances down here, like NaCl and CaCl2, these are ionic. They have a metal and a nonmetal. They actually break apart. So NaCl breaks into Na plus and Cl minus. So there's actually two particles broken off from one NaCl molecule. And then CaCl2, again, it's ionic, but when it splits up, there's one Ca2 plus and two Cl1 minuses. So that actually gives you three. So that means that there's going to be more of an effect on the vapor pressure, um, boiling point, freezing point from first off ionic things, but second off ionic things that produce more. So if you have CaCl2, there's three particles to it. So that's going to have more of an effect on like the boiling point, freezing point, vapor pressure than say just NaCl in there. Um, here's some examples. So AlCl3 and CO2. So how many molecules would NaCl3 produce? Oop, my phone's going off. Hold on. Okay, my bad. All right, so um, if we're looking at AlCl3, how many um, molecules would it produce when it's dissolved in water? Well, first off, you need to ask yourself the question, is it ionic or covalent? Well, AlCl3 is ionic because Al is a metal, Cl is a nonmetal, so this is an ionic compound. Because of that, it's going to split apart when you put it into water. So you'll have 1 Al and 3 Cl. So 1 Al3+, 3 Cl1 minuses. So you're going to make uh, four particles there. All right, CO2, when you put it in water, it's only going to make one because it's covalent. CO2, both nonmetals, so covalent. They're just going to stay um, together as a unit, so CO2 is just going to be itself. All right, here's a little bit more practice. So if you got MgCl2, ionic, it splits into three different things. Al2O3, ionic, splits into five things. CH4, covalent, um, it will split into it doesn't split. I almost tricked you. So it's just one thing. And then C6H12O6, again, covalent, so just one thing. Okay, so I thought that we would um, look at this just a little bit. So if you have these um, solutions, you have NaCl solution, CaCl2 solution, a sugar solution, and then just pure water, and we want to talk about the freezing points and boiling points. All right, so First off, you need to remember what freezing point and boiling point do. So freezing point does what whenever you, um, let me change my color here. All right, so freezing point, whenever you add solutes to it, it lowers the freezing point, freezing point depression. Boiling point increases, so it elevates the boiling point, okay? So the more solute particles you have in any of these um, down here, then the more it either elevates the boiling point or lowers the freezing point, okay? So the things that are going to affect it most are going to be ionic things. So these two things right here are ionic. This is covalent, and this is just pure solvent, no solute at all, okay? 
So CaCl2 is going to give us three particles when it breaks apart. It's ionic, so it's going to break into uh, Ca and two Cl's. Ionic is going to give us two. I mean ionic crap. NaCl, <laughs> sodium chloride is going to give us two. All right, and then this one down here, this is our sucrose, our table sugar. It's only going to give us one, and then this one essentially has zero solute particles because it's all solvent. Okay, so the highest boiling point is going to be the one with the most. So this one right here is going to be our highest. All right, our next highest is going to be this one because it has the second most solutes. And then down to our sugars, so this will be our third highest. And then water is going to be our lowest or our fourth highest. All right, freezing point depresses or decreases the more solutes you have. So the one with the most solute particles, CaCl2, is going to have the lowest freezing point. All right, the second lowest freezing point goes to the one with the second lowest, I mean, the uh, second highest number of solute particles. All right, then comes our table sugar. So he gets the third lowest um, freezing point. And then the highest freezing point is going to be our liquid water. Also remember that vapor pressure also um, lowers. So vapor pressure would follow the same trend as freezing point, okay?